Hello there, lovely folks at YouTube. Ren here um, with a garden tour. I haven't done one of these in a hot minute. Um, there's a few small changes that have happened in the garden. This is the time of year where you can't really do a whole lot other than some basic cleanup. Um, the soil is really still too wet to be worked um, here in the beginning of March. I'm hoping that maybe in a couple weeks we'll be dried out enough that we can actually start like tilling and planting but right now it's it's although it's tempting to do so because it's so nice outside it's like 68 it's gorgeous um it is gonna rain overnight tonight it's gonna rain again tomorrow like everything is still too wet and you'll see what i mean in just a minute um so let's talk about what's going on in the garden shall we so um first of all we do have my hazel is blooming so you can see the male catkins here um, and I don't know if you can see, maybe if I put my fingers in front of it, that little bud has like the teeniest, tiniest little spray of red at the end. That's actually the female flower. It's not a very showy flower, but it will make hazelnuts eventually. Um, other things that are blooming, as you can see underneath there and also over here, we have crocuses. I do have crocuses planted in this bed, um, including this little group right here, which is actually something that after they're done blooming i have to remember to dig up i meant to do it last year and then just <laughs> didn't um this is actually a group of crocuses that's growing right under where i have um my little stone path my little stone edging is supposed to go and yeah i couldn't place a stone there because there were crocuses that were growing there and i didn't want to kill them and then i just forgot to move them so before i put another stone down there i'm gonna have to remember to move them hopefully this year Oh, uh, what else? Blueberry's getting ready to bloom. I'm hoping this is in focus because it's very hard for me to see with the glare of the sun right now. Um, but, yep. So we're going to get a bunch of blueberries here. And we have this little smaller one here. It also has a bunch of buds on it as well. So, very exciting stuff. Raspberries, there are some canes that are showing some green buds on them. There are other canes that I'm just not entirely sure on. Um, I ha probably have to wait a week or so um, before I know which one of these are the new growth canes and which ones are the ones that fruited last year that I can prune out. Because once a raspberry has fruited on its cane, it usually does that in the first, in the second year, unless it's an ever-bearing variety, in which case it does it in the first year. Um, they, uh, yeah, once they fruited on that cane, they need, that cane needs to be removed because it will no longer grow on that cane. Uh, same thing with blackberries too, so. Uh, you can see over here in this bed where my son has started digging <laughs> a little early and you can see kind of why it's too early. So uh, my son also has two dogs that come with him when he comes to help me in the garden. And they love my yard and they run like crazy. You'll see all kinds of little divots and gouges from dogs playing in the grass, which they're welcome to do so. I don't care. I don't give a shit about my grass. Um, but, you know, here in this bed, they've also run amok in the mud. And they've kind of compacted the soil a little bit because it's so wet. So once this soil dries out, I'm going to have to take the tiller. By tiller, I mean my garden fork and my own sweat and um, till this. So there's still a lot of weeds that need to be hold out of here. A lot of burdock. I get a lot of burdock in my yard. So it's a lot of, a lot of need for those deep nutrients. A lot of mess, you can see. So that, that hose right there, that's actually the soaker hose that goes in this bed. My son pulled it out before he started digging. Um, same thing with this bed, you know, it's got the a lot of digging that needs to be done. There are some carrots that I missed in there, um, which are definitely going to have to be just dug out and removed because those things are probably half eaten by bugs now. This is another one that needs to be cleaned out. I do have a little volunteer in this one. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, that is bloody sorrel, which is quite impressive for it to be over here because it grows literally on the other side of my yard over by the pond but there it is so and then of course the this is my asparagus bed and I do have some strawberries in here so you can see like this one right here um that's one of the cultivated strawberries I don't remember what cultivar it is but I have this little guy right here which I'm very excited I planted him last year and he made one little pup which is this one right here um, that is the Fragaria virginiana, which is the native Virginian strawberry. So excited to have those join my little garden club. So 
I'm gonna get my shed door open here. You can see the, it's actually looking pretty good in there right now compared to how it's been. This is another thing that I'm just like gobsmacked at. Look at all the nettles that I have. They have spread everywhere. So we're gonna have a lot of nettles for eating this spring, which is exciting. Um, this is one of the plants that, um, I don't know if I've mentioned that I will be moving. I know I mentioned it in one of my other videos. I don't know how many of y'all have seen that video, but I do plan on moving in the summer. Um, my son, who, the one who comes over to help me in the garden, is the one who will be taking over this house and basically renting it from me. So he will be doing some of the garden maintenance, um, but also having a yard for his two dogs. Uh, the nettles, however, have got to go. <laughs> so those will entirely be dug out and either moved or just moved to my new house or moved to a different place in the yard. This is a little guy that I had that survived over here, which I'm excited about. This is one I planted last year. It was just a little bitty thing, and now it's gotten quite big. This is winter savory. Um, I've grown this in my yard before, and I've, um, like, occasionally it'll get hit by a really, really, really cold winter, and it'll die back, which is how I lost my last one. But we had a really mild winter, and it's stuck around this time. That's really good to add to, like, soups and stews, particularly anything that you're with beans. Um, you can see the apples are still dormant. I've done a lot of the pruning on the apples that needs to be done. Not all of it, but a lot of it. This is a new, this is a new bed here. So you can see there's, there's still a lot of cardboard that I put down to kind of kill off all the grass and weeds in this area. Um, and you can also see the dogs have been having a heyday and running all through it, <laughs> which is why it looks like a hot mess. Um, I'm going to put another layer of cardboard down and then mulch on top of this to um, make this into an actual bed for these plants right here. I was very excited to get these. They're not easy to find. Um, I got these from a place in Florida called Mail Order Natives, which I've ordered from before. I was very pleased at the size of these plants that I got, because I think this was like $10 for each of these. Um, and this is a good size for only $10 for a plant. Um, I mean, you can see it's almost two feet tall, and I got three of them. Um, this is the Mirica... Frick, 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 frick. What is the species name? I can't remember the species name. It's America, um, which is the Southern Bayberry. So this is an evergreen. It is fragrant, um, very fragrant. It's, oh, mm. it will make fruits in the fall, which are somewhat showy. They're like bluish gray colored berries, but the berries have a wax coating on them. And you can kind of like process that wax off of them to make like candles and soaps. And um, for me, like bayberry is the fragrance of yule like hands down so i'm hoping that someday i'll be able to get a bunch of berries off of these things and process them into wax that i can use to make candles um that bayberry wax will be added to our yule candle that we make every year and burn throughout the longest night so oh i have a leaf here and see there's one of the little leaves that fell off um i did find this one in particular in the middle oh there's another one here shoot the dogs kind of bumped into this and they broke some branches off which i'm a little frustrated by um but um i found one of these earlier today i just found this one right here um what i've been doing is it's a little early to do so usually you want to wait until the spring when they start putting out new growth um, but if you strip most of these leaves off and you dip the stem in rooting hormone, um, we're going to try and root these and make whole new bayberry bushes that I can bring to my new house. So that's the plan for these anyway. I'm going to hang on to this. The extra leaves that I'm stripping off, I'm actually going to dry those and put them into incense because it'll smell really good. So, but anyway, yeah, you can see I have three of these bayberry bushes here. Um, they do grow to about six to eight feet tall, so they will basically block out this fence. They will also sucker, uh, which means they'll send up little bayberry babies along their roots. So hopefully we'll have a whole big colony of bayberry here uh, that will help to block out this fence. And it will look really nice. So. Uh, da, da, da. You can see I've got a lot of cleaning to do. This is an area that I definitely need to clean up soon. Um, because this is where my sweet grass grows. 
you can see there is uh, like this is sweet grass right here but there's also a lot of the just garbage grass that's growing amongst it and I need to clear that garbage grass out to give the sweet grass a better opportunity to grow my little tata tates are going gangbusters here and then of course I have the the blackberries there I think I pruned those blackberries in the fall they look like they've been pruned so I might not need to prune those again I honestly don't remember um, it's been kind of a wild and crazy year so but anyway and then this little guy here this is my gooseberry so hopefully hopefully it comes back there's a blackberry that's growing here that needs to be dug out that's got to go so roses are coming back you can see this one's already got leaves on it what in the hell and a whole bunch of new buds on it too so this this cane right here probably needs to be pruned back that is one that I will also try to propagate so anything that I'm going to prune off of some of these perennials I'm going to try and grow it into a new plant to bring in my new house oh it's it's mostly a mess you know like I said I haven't been able to do a whole lot out here so it's a lot of mess um, I did clean up some of the debris back like basically from here back is where I've been working because this is like my favorite part of the garden so there's a lot of stuff that's been cleaned out of here this elder's been pruned back so it hopefully won't be ridiculous um, I have some new plants back here too so you can see right there I planted some anemone um, now it originally had a different type of anemone here I had the um, uh, the wood anemone which is like a, a perennial that doesn't grow from a corm um, these are the, the the type that go from corms so it's it's in the same genus but it grows in a slightly different way and you can see these are blue whereas my other ones are white um, all right so this is another one sorry my video cut out there but anyway um, this is another one that I've been growing um, that's pretty fairly new this is a geranium uh, not what most people will think of when they hear geranium they think of the ones that you grow in the pots with the big red flowers that's not this so what that flower is that's actually we call it a geranium but it's actually a pelargonium uh, this is a true geranium geranium species um, sometimes called the wood geranium so this grows in the shade it is a perennial it makes nice little pink flowers and fairly um, fragrant as well so and hopefully hopefully this will seed and spread because that's my goal is to get this to spread um, so anyway other things over here you can see my hellebores are really going gangbusters right now this is always a good time of year for the hellebores so this is another one that I do plan on bringing with me um, luckily this one seeds like crazy so I can just gather a bunch of the seed and I should be good there Ugh. the pond right now um, the waterfall is turned off just because it's been cold and there is some I don't know if you can see there's a bunch of leaves and debris in there I'm trying to stay back because I'm hoping that one of my goldfish will come back up to the surface again there uh, the fish did make it through the winter it was a little hairy there I was a little worried about them honestly because um what will kill the goldfish is not the cold but ice um, if the whole surface of the pond gets covered with ice and they can't breathe there's no gas exchange then they will die there's one I don't know if y'all can see it there is one kind of peeking up there I'm gonna sneak a little bit closer it's like right behind the drip line the tubing yeah I don't know if y'all will be able to see it but anyway yeah so there was one one day sometime in January I think it was where um, it was really really cold and I went out like when it was just starting to warm the next day and I found like almost three inches of ice completely covering the surface of my pond and I literally like I took the garden fork and I just chipped a big hole in it um, and crossed my fingers and thankfully they seem to have they seem to have made it through so I managed to catch it in time that they they didn't suffocate so yeah there's definitely 
Definitely a big goldfish in there that I can see. There's only like two fish in there that are orange. The rest of them are actually like grayish black. Um, I intentionally buy... Oh, I can see one of the black ones too. You probably can't see it on the camera because I can't really get it to zoom in. But yeah, I can see two of them there for sure. Um, I usually try to buy the darker colored ones simply because they have better camouflage from predators because I do get critters that come and eat eat my, eat my fish so um the darker colored ones have a better chance of survival but sometimes i don't think my heat pump's about to kick in here um sometimes those goldfish are dark not they're gray colored not because that's their natural coloring but because um when they're stressed they lose all their coloration so they come out into my pond and then they get fat and happy and unstressed and then they turn orange so Anyway, this is another new plant that I got last year that I'm also very excited about because it's going to bloom and I'm excited to see how it looks when it blooms. Um, this is called Golden Ragwort and it is a native ground cover for wet shade here in Virginia. So I pulled out like all my vinca. You can, I don't know if y'all remember, this whole area used to be all covered with vinca. Now it's a lot of cardboard and weeds and then this plant right here. Um, this plant started off as like, I got it in a little four inch pot and now it is like spreading like wildfire and I am so here for it. So, um, and it's already getting ready to bloom. So this is very exciting development. I'm excited to see where it goes. I'm trying to get like some of those like non-native perennials that are really aggressive or invasive out of my yard and replace them with natives um, because that's just the kick I've been on. That's kind of one of the exciting things about starting over fresh too is that I'll have the ability to do some of that. Uh, now this guy over here I've cleared this area out in preparation for um, dividing this plant um, which you can see is just starting to show some little little buds there. This is my hosta, my hosta plantaginea. It is not native, but it's also not super aggressive, so it gets to stay. It's also really nice, really nice plant. One of my favorite hostas, honestly. It's not super showy in the leaves, but the flowers are just stunning. Um, this guy's going to be divided. I'm going to move portion of it further back where it's closer to my little maple tree right here. Um, and that way it has more room because right now where it is right next to the path it just overshades the entire it grows over the whole path and it's you gotta like uh, step around it so and we're gonna do that and we'll move big chunks of it into the front as well um getting this cleaned is always a huge project so that's gonna happen when it's a little bit warmer because right now i will freeze my hands trying to get all that stuff out of there there's a lot of leaves and muck down in the bottom that has to be cleaned out I don't have a vacuum, like a pond vacuum or anything to do that because um, the pond's not big enough to warrant the cost. There's the heat pump. So let's move. So anyway, yeah, I have to basically go in there and um, clean it out by hand. With a, Like I literally just use a bucket and dump all the water out of it and then have an old rag and wipe down the sides and spread all the stones out on a blanket in the <laughs> in the middle of the yard to dry off and get all the muck off of them and and then they go back in the pond uh, the fish get a little hiatus in a bucket in the meantime while I'm doing that so it has to be like a one-day project it's a lot of work for one day so anyway um, upcoming things that I've got you know today probably not a whole lot honestly um, I might do some cleaning up, get some of the, um, more of the debris, like you can see the little stems from my marshmallows that are sticking up there. I might get those cleared out, get some of the roses pruned back a little bit. Maybe, maybe, if I'm feeling really ambitious, I'll kick the pole pruner to the top of the apple tree just to get it down to a more manageable size so we can actually harvest the apples off of it. Um, other than that, the only thing other that I was planning on doing is just putting some cardboard down like around the roses and stuff. Um, I don't usually dig back there because it's too much of a hassle to dig with, you know, constantly evading being poked in the eye by rose thorns. So um, I have a hole, I don't know if you saw on my deck there, see that big 
pile of trash. That's actually all cardboard that I've been saving up over the winter time to lay out in my garden this spring. So since I'm no longer a Girl Scout cookie mom, I can't rely on those Girl Scout cookie boxes to <laughs> act as weed block anymore and I have to improvise with other trash for my yard. So anyway, that's all I got going on right now. Um, things will look very different come April time. There'll be a lot more blooming, a lot more activity. But right now, we're just kind of in that interim period where we're waiting for things to wake up and waiting for the soil to dry out. So, anyway, I think that's all I have for you today. I hope this video finds you well, and I will see you again soon.